Hey there, my name is Ron Pereira of Gembe Academy and I'd like to welcome you to this course that's focused on dealing with the seven deadly wastes. Now, in this first module, we're going to get things started with an overview of the topic where we'll learn what the seven wastes are, allowing us to then build on this knowledge in later modules where our focus will be on finding ways of eliminating all forms of waste. Well, specifically, by the end of this module, you'll know exactly what it means for an activity to be value-added, non-value-added, or waste. And you'll also be able to identify what are commonly referred to as the seven deadly wastes. Now, throughout this course on the seven wastes, we'll be visiting RAM Technologies, a custom foam fabricator located in Washington. And while inside their factory, we'll do our best to demonstrate what each of the seven wastes look like while also showing what things look like when these wastes are eliminated. But let's go ahead and start things off by discussing the various elements of work. Now when I say elements, I mean that any work or activity we do can be classified into one of three categories. First, we have what we call value-added work. Now, for something to be called value-added, three things must exist. The customer must be willing to pay for it, the thing must be changed in some way. In other words, we like to say that when value-added work is done, the form, fit, or function of a thing is changed. And finally, the work must be done right the first time. Now, if any of these three points are missing, the step or process cannot be said to be value-added. And while value-added activities are what we prefer to do most of the time, we won't spend much time or effort focusing on value-added steps as it relates to reducing waste. But I'll explain why this is later in the module. Next, non-value-added work is work that adds no value but must be done to meet the customer's needs under today's conditions. Now this is a minor area of focus in lean manufacturing since it's harder to improve in this area and there's less of this type of work then the third and final category, which is waste. Waste is also referred to as muda, which adds no value and customers are not willing to pay for it. Now, the best way to understand the impact of waste is to look at work from the customer's viewpoint while asking yourself, would I want to pay for this if I was a customer? Now, even some things that you would be willing to pay for may be done at a cost that's too high or with too many non-essential steps. Now, it could be said that eliminating waste is like defragging a computer. When you defragment a computer, you will rearrange the data so that you can open up space. But when data is fragmented, there are useless bits that are filling up memory, much like the useless amounts of waste taking up space and time within our processes. By identifying where value-added portions are and moving or removing the non-value-added bits, you improve performance of your computer. In the same way, taking waste out of your process improves its performance by radically reducing the time it takes to fulfill a customer request. Now, as we discussed earlier, we'd prefer to spend most of our time doing value-added work. Unfortunately, when we look at the total lead time through a value stream, we find that a massive amount of muda or waste is stealing resources and time. Another unfortunate activity we often see companies doing is attempting to reduce the overall lead time by making the value-added processes more efficient. In other words, as an example, they work to save a few seconds or minutes of machine cycle time in order to reduce the overall lead time. And while this isn't necessarily bad, there's far more opportunity in reducing the waste in the process first before worrying about improving the value-added steps. With all of this said, in order to be able to attack this waste, we must be able to identify it. So, let's spend the remainder of this module by discussing what we referred to as the seven deadly wastes. Now the first waste is defects, which is simply work that is less than the level the customer, both internal and external, has requested. Now some examples of defects are rework, scrap, missing parts, wrong parts, and yield loss at startup. Now as a point of reference, the waste of defects is also sometimes referred to as a waste of correction. Now in, the, in this example, we see that our operator, whose name is Isaac, is struggling to understand his work instructions and, as such, scrap parts have resulted. 
Next, we come to the waste of inventory, which is any work or material on hand other than what's needed right now to satisfy customer demand. Now, some examples of inventory waste are excess raw materials, work in process, finished goods, supplies, and spare parts. Now, in an upcoming module, we'll spend more time exploring the different types of inventory we might have on hand, such as cycle stock, buffer stock, and safety stock. Now, in this example, we see Isaac surrounded by piles of inventory, making it hard for him to even know what to grab. All right, next we experience the waste of processing, sometimes called over-processing, which is when something's designed in such a way that uses more resources such as space, energy, or people than is truly required. Sort of like using a sledgehammer to smash a peanut. The waste of processing is definitely the hardest to understand and learn to see since the most common root causes are a lack of understanding of customer needs. Now, some examples of processing waste are machines that are slower or faster than needed, equipment that uses more energy than needed, redundant work such as copying information, drilling a hole instead of punching it, and cleaning something multiple times. Well, here we see Isaac carefully measuring each piece of foam when, as it turns out, these pieces have already been cut to size and don't require such meticulous and time-consuming ver verification. Next, anytime there's idle time created because materials, machines, or information are not ready for people, we have the waste of waiting. Now this waste is usually less visible than the others because it's often replaced by overproduction or busy work. So, in fact, when waiting becomes visible, it's important to keep people from working just to keep busy, since this busy work often does more harm than good. Now some examples of waiting are people waiting for materials, an accountant waiting for information to close the monthly books, warehouse employees waiting on a forklift, or a nurse waiting on important supplies to arrive. Now in this scene, it seems that Isaac has run out of work and is obviously looking for something to do, so he resorts to his newspaper and text messaging his friends.